charge in a non-uniform electric field. Charge in a non-uniform electric field, right? A uniform electric field looks like something like this. And in the volt, the equipotential lines would be like this. So that's V, V1, 2, 3. Here, the potential lines are kind of squiggly. So it's defined by the set of equipotential lines shown above. A negative 20 microcoulomb charge is moved from one location to another in the region. On the diagram, indicate the direction of the electric field at points A, B, C, D, and E. Between which two points is there the greatest potential difference? And between which two locations will the work done on the charge by the electric field be the greatest? How much work is done on the charge by the electric field? when moving from point C to D. How does this compare to the work done on the charge by the electric field when moving from point D to C? How much work is done on the charge by the electric field when moving from point A to B? And then how does that compare to the work done on the charge by the electric field when moving from A to E? Couple more questions. Compare the magnitude of the work done on the charge in the process moving A, B, C, D, E to the magnitude of the work done on the charge moving from A directly to E. How much work is done on the charge moving from A, B, C, D, E, and then back to A? On the diagram, indicate the direction of the electric field at the five points. In general, the electric field should point towards the lower voltage. So it's going to be going to the right. Okay, here's your highest voltage, 10. Goes to 5, 0. Now, we're not worrying about magnitudes here. You could say, hey, wait, it's increasing again. No, it keeps decreasing. It's negative 5, negative 10. So the voltages will point to the right. The electric field is always perpendicular to the equipotential lines. So see how it's perpendicular to A there and pointing to the right. Perpendicular to B, this guy got a little out of whack, we'll put him there. C down here, D perpendicular to the point, and E perpendicular that way. Between which two points is there the greatest potential difference? Well, at point A, you have 10 volts and point E, minus 10. So the difference there, depending on which way you go, let's go left to right. So the minus 10, minus, so this is your final voltage, let's see, go this way, minus the initial is minus 20 volts. If you go the other way, it would be 10 minus a minus 10, if you're going this way, and that's 20 volts. In any case, the magnitude is the same, so the greatest range in voltage is between points A and E. Between which two locations will the work done on the charge by the electric field be the greatest? Well, the work done on a charge is its change in potential energy, and the change in potential energy is Q delta V, handy equation to have, and it comes, of course, from the definition of potential energy, where potential energy per charge is going to be voltage or electric potential. So work is Q delta V. The greatest potential difference is between A and E. So the most work is done moving the charges between A and E. How much work is done on the charge by the electric field when moving from point C to D, illustrated here? And how does that compare to the work done on the charge by the electric field when moving in the other direction? We have our handy work equation here. Work is Q delta V, which is going to be V final minus V initial. It's normally always final minus initial. And what's our final position? D, the initial is C. We plug in our values and make sure you use the sign. This is a negative charge. Make sure you put it in there. It's negative 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, right? Because it was minus 20 microcoulombs multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. The final voltage is negative 5 volts minus the initial, which is 0. And see how the negatives cancel out? So the work done by the external force is 1 times 10 to the minus, excuse me, work done by the field is 1 times 10 to the minus 4th joules. Now let's calculate the work done as the charge moves from point D to point C. 
Once again, we have work is Q, V final minus V initial. This time, the final destination is C, and D is the initial. We put in the charge, negative charge, final voltage of zero, initial of negative five. So these two negatives cancel out, but then we still have this negative here. So our overall answer is the work done by the field is negative one times 10 to the minus fourth joules. Now you have to keep track of the signs, right? You had two negatives here and another negative. Why is the work negative? Well, the charge is moving in this direction. What's the direction of the electric field? The electric field points in the direction of decreasing voltage. So the electric field is in this direction. So it's opposite the motion, so it will do negative work. How much work is done on the charge by the electric field when moving from point A to point B? How does this compare to the work done on the charge by the field when moving from point A all the way over to E? Well, let's start with A to B. It's Q delta V, V final minus V initial, so it's VB minus VA. Here's our charge again, 5 volts, which is the voltage at B, minus 10 volts, which is the voltage at A. And we get the work done is 1 times 10 to the minus 4th joules. Hopefully you notice that the work done on the charge moving from A to B is the same as the work moving from C to D. The same amount of work would be required to move the charge any 5 volt drop. So also from B to C and then from D to E. All will be the same work. So now let's just calculate going from A to E. Okay, so it's going to be my final position is VE, initial is VA, work equals Q delta V. Here's our charge again. Our final destination has minus 10 volts, minus a positive 10 volts over here, and we get 4 times 10 to the minus 4th joules. So from A to B, the voltage decreased by 5 volts. From A to E, the voltage decreased by 20 volts, 4 times more. We'd expect the work done on the charge when moving from A to E to be four times more work done on the charge when moving from A to B. And the math shows that our expectation, if you had it, was correct. Compare the magnitude of the work done on the charge in the process of moving A, B, C, D, E to the magnitude of the work done on the charge moving from A directly to E. So here's the long way around over here, and here's the short way. We're going to find a very important point here. It doesn't matter what path you did. Moving the charge along the path with four 5-volt drops would be the exact same as moving the charge along a path with one 20-volt drop. That is so incredibly important. The path does not matter. The work done on the charge depends on the change in voltage, that's it, the initial and final points, and in both cases the change in voltage is the same, whatever path you took. You could even do something like this, and then finally wind up over here, same thing, same work done. How much work is done on the charge in the process of moving A to B, C to B to C, C to D, D to E, and then E back to A? Well, just using the equation, work is Q delta V, our initial and final voltage are both 10. So 10 minus 10 is 0. There is no work done. So when the charge starts at point A and ends at point A, there's no change in voltage. So the net change in voltage is 0. The work done is 0. And what's happening here, the green path, you're doing positive work, 4 times 10 to the minus 4th joules, and on the red path, you're doing negative work, negative 4 times 10 to the minus 4th joules. Add them together, you get 0. Another key point, if you wind up back where you started from, the net work is 0.